Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. Today you're going to get to see us pour this 26 by 26 garage floor, 4 inches thick. It's got fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. It's got water reducer in it so we can pour a little bit looser slump. It's 3500 PSI. If you like watching concrete videos, please consider subscribing to my channel. Now, when we pour garages, we're a sub on a job like this. So the guys that came in and did the concrete foundation, they hire us to come in and pour the concrete floor. Now, they're the ones that that have the spec or the, the de detail or design of the job. So we have nothing to do with that. We just come in and pour and finish the concrete. This will get a power trowel finish today. It'll get sawed control joints. Now, I'm just going to show you the pour. It's going to be pretty much in real time. I, I cut out very, very little so you can get a good idea of just how fast we can pour a concrete floor with just three of us. Now most of the garage floors that we do like this that are inside a concrete foundation, they don't require wire mesh or rebar. Basically what the guys do is they'll, you know, obviously come in and pour the, the concrete walls. The guys come into backfill. Sometimes it's four feet of backfill. Sometimes it's eight feet of backfill, depending on if they you know have a full foundation like the basement there you see to the left a little bit and they backfill when they backfill that they they dump it in in lifts like you know 12 inch lifts 18 inch lifts and they compact it so everything's compacted really really hard so it's not going to settle and now because it's an inside pour it's inside the garage the dirt's not going to heave it's not going to get below freezing inside the garage especially with the styrofoam under there so the ground will never heave. It's not going to settle. It's not going to heave. So the that's not going to crack the, the concrete floor. Now what wire does and what rebar does is it does help hold the concrete together when it cracks. It doesn't make the concrete necessarily stronger. It doesn't make 3500 PSI concrete, 4000 PSI concrete just because there's wire in there. So the wire, you know, basically helps hold it together a little bit better if it does want to crack. Now, in our experience, you know, we do, I don't know how many garages, we probably do 100 of these garages a year. If the compaction, if the soil, if the subgrade is done right, if it's nice and flat, if the pour is done right, if it's sawed, we don't have any trouble with the concrete cracking. The concrete's not just going to be bad because there's no wire in there. I don't know how many people say, no wire, no rebar in your pores. It doesn't need it when it's inside a concrete foundation like this. Now it does have the fiber mesh reinforcement, which which works pretty good. I mean, it's, it's mixed in the concrete truck. It's throughout the whole thickness of the concrete. But basically, you know, what's, what's gonna make a big difference here is your subgrade. Your subgrade's gotta be done right. So you don't want the concrete to settle, you don't want it to heave. We usually don't have any trouble with that. Now on outside slabs that are outside of a concrete walls that just sitting on the ground, you know, then we'll put wire and rebar in it because that's just sitting on the outside ground, even though it does still have a good sub base, it doesn't have a, f a foundation like this to lock in the floor. The floor is not gonna go anywhere. Now what we're doing is we're getting it poured out. It's probably, I think it was around eight and a half yards here we got. Uh, like I said, 3,500 PSI concrete, so it's good strong concrete. We also like using inside a garage like this, uh, what we call like a half air mix. So it's got, it does have a little bit of air entrainment in it because, you know, it may in the winter see some, some water that gets in there and the water you know right by the doorways it might freeze so we want a little bit of air entrainment in there we don't have trouble uh power troweling concrete with air entrainment i've done it for years and years as long as you as long as you do the timing right you know you're going to be fine now what i'm doing is um we set a pin there to grade using our creep pin pro and i just magged the center pad that we're going to strike the concrete off from pull out the pin and there's our center pad right there that's our grade pad for the middle and then we we snap a chalk line around the inside of the concrete 
inside foundation but the, the perimeter of our pour using the laser I actually have the laser set up way in the back you can kind of see it the DeWalt laser I'm using and we mag our edges even with that concrete line and that line that slopes out the concrete doors a couple inches so almost all the garage pours that we do like this they all slope out the doors none of them are flat sometimes we'll have a drain a center drain in some of them but not very often most of them will just have the slope to it on new pours like this and another thing we like to do is because you'll see her here in a second that the way we screed concrete which is different than most people we're pretty fast at it so we like getting almost all the concrete poured out in a garage like this because we know it's not going to take us very long to screed so let's just this actually is what takes the longest is just getting it poured out of the truck and then you know bull floating afterwards that actually takes longer than the screeding too even though bull floating is one of the easiest thing to do so we get it we get it poured all out Today it just so happens we have a front dump with the company we're using today. A lot of the times we don't have these front dumps. We have a rear dump where I have to control the chute, which uh, isn't always a bad thing because a lot of times with a front dump like this, the driver doesn't know exactly how much concrete you want and where where you want it. So he just kind of moves the, the truck and the chute kind of where he wants it, and we end up pulling it back in like what the guys are doing right now versus if i was controlling the chute i know exactly how much we want where we want it we don't have to pull the concrete back up to where we need it because i get enough there but that's okay you know not having me run the chute leaves me to mag float the edges which is what i'm doing now so it's kind of like a i don't know it's kind of like a 50 50 thing So Darren and Luca, just what we call, they're just kind of puddling the concrete. They're getting it raked out as close to grade as they possibly can. Hopefully making it as easy as possible for us to screed. And we're just going to, we're going to wet screed this. We're going to kick screed it today. No, no power screed, no fiber screed. Even though we could use that, um, the pour is relatively small. You know, Darren and I have been screeding together for over 30 years. So that's a 14 foot screed. You can see how easy it is with two guys when you know when they have the same motion when they know how to kick to fill in their footprints it makes screeding like super easy especially when you're using water reducer and you can pour you know between a six six and a half inch slump which is i which i feel like is about the easiest pouring slump for doing floors like this i don't know why guys want to pour it stiffer than that when you can use water reducer and loosen the slump up like this and just make it real easy on yourself make it real fast like we we like getting the, the floors in bang and then because a lot of times we're pouring two like the house and the garage it just so happens this garage wasn't ready when the house floor was ready but a lot of times we're pouring two floors so we want to get both floors in before one guy has to go back and start finishing you can see we're pouring, you know, how we're screeding that bay right there. It's, what, 14 feet by roughly 13, 14 by 13. And it takes us, you know, maybe about 30 seconds to screed a bay like that if we were timing that thing. We just kick in to fill our footprints as we move ourselves backwards. And all young Luke has to do, who's puddling behind us, all he has to do is just make sure he doesn't get it low or too high and just keep keep raking the concrete so we don't have to stop we actually like it just a little bit high as we screed and pulling a little bit back just a little bit of what I call a roll maybe like an inch roll coming back and we definitely clean that's kind of what me and Darren are going by the ends to make sure we don't have any dips or any humps in the concrete we want to make sure we're scoring with the rod And for us, right here, this, this doesn't get any easier than this right here, really. Not even with a power screed. For us, this is just about as easy as using a power screed. You can see I'm over there on the other side. I'm just doing it one-handed. That's how easy that is for us. And we'll keep that, you know, we don't want to saw that. Sawing concrete isn't what 
pros do to screed floors like this, sawing it back and forth. That's kind of what amateurs do. Um, pros will just kind of have a, a stroke kind of like we do. There's, there's a bunch of different variations to it. Some guys, some guys will screed by themselves. And then some guys will screed with two on the rod. But most of them is when, you know, you're pulling it back. Some guys will have a lot longer stroke than we do. We basically just like to have like a relatively short, like eight inches. And once we see that we've scored, bang, we just keep going. You don't like the, the stroke to be too, too long. So I think right now, right now we're just a little bit low, having to kick too hard. So we want to make sure we got plenty of mud in there so we don't have to kick too hard as we go. Especially me. <laughs> I like to have a lot of concrete by my boots. Now, because this is going down relatively fast, I think we're like a little, we're a little bit over 10, 11 minutes into this pour right now. We don't usually bow float anything until we're done. So we'll get it all screeded, and then one guy will come back and get it bow floated, and then that'll be you know that'll be the pour. That's basically how it goes here. But what I want to know from you guys is, you know, number one, number one, where are you from today? Where are you, where are you watching from? And do you think this is relatively fast for a three-man pour in a garage like this? Would you screed this any differently? You know, just a couple questions I'd like to know if you if you tackle this thing a little bit different than what we do. Now, you can see we didn't fill it completely in with concrete just in case we got the concrete a little bit high. We want to be able to pull it back into that low spot that we got. And we'll get it screeded almost down to the low spot. And then we'll just add a little bit more from there. We don't want to be shoveling out two, three, four wheelbarrows of concrete and have a big, big pile of concrete on the outside for someone else to clean up. You can see I'm over there doing the one hand thing again. Now what we're doing is gonna, we're, we're slowly teaching Luke. Luke's 18 years old. Slowly teaching him how to screed, how you pull back like that, kick your foot in, fill where you pulled it back, kick your foot. You can see he's going right foot to left foot. Kick, fill in, screed, kick it, fill it in, put it down and screed. So right now as he's learning, he's picking the screed up way too high, but he's trying to get he's trying to get the motion down. Once he gets the motion down of pulling the screed back towards your boots, and then when you pick it up to set it back, you fill it, you fill back in where you picked your foot out from so you can keep stepping back. Once he gets that motion down, he won't have to pick the screed up quite as high. So when Darren and I do it, you know, that screed only comes up off the concrete maybe about an inch. The higher, the higher Luke picks his end up, the lower it makes mine and you know, he might want to make me dig into my side. I'm being kind of conscious of him picking it up like that, but that's basically how you learn to kick screed right there. It takes, you know, it, it could take two or three floors like this doing the whole complete floor with Luke, but after two or three floors, he'd have it down pretty quick. The key is, you know, making sure that the end of the screed is what we call scoring and being able to watch that end as you do all those other things. So there's a little bit of a trick to it. And then Darren's cleaning up where we pulled the screed off, making sure the concrete matches the form. We set the form to grade over there while Luke is going over here and he's bow floating. So down and back with a bow float. When you pour with water reducer, you got about a six, six and a half inch slump. This is another thing that makes bow floating real easy. It doesn't take you two or three times, two or three passes over the same area to get it nice and smooth. We like getting it nice and smooth. That way when we come back here to power trial, probably in an hour, hour and a half, this thing will be ready to power trial as the sun comes up over the trees. Power trial is really easy if you get it bow floated nice and smooth. He's watching out for the camera. 
We also like I like that bow float with the rounded edges too. That it it just tends to leave a little fewer, a little less lines on the ends than the square edge ones. Now Luke, because he's kind of new at bow floating, he is leaving a little bit of a line on each end. But when Darren and I bow float, you'd barely see those lines on the end of the bow float. We could take them right out almost with that those rounded edge bow floats. Now that's a really simple garage floor pour right there as, as far as we're concerned. We'll do, you know, today what we're going to do is we're going to leave uh, one guy here, probably Darren. We'll leave Luke with him because Luke's learning how to power trial too. And this is a really good floor to learn how to power trial on. And then I'm going to meet up with, uh, if you've watched any of my other videos, we got another guy, another guy that's regular. This was the first day of school, so he had a youngster that was starting pre-K, and he just wanted to be there to drop his pre-K boy off for his first day of school. So I'm going to meet up with Luke, and we're going to go pour another pad on another job. So we'll get a couple pours in today, which makes things kind of cool. Helps keep uh, everything to schedule. And you see Luke's doing a pretty good job bow floating. I'm picking up my, my laser. We didn't even really have to use the laser. I just left it set up just in case somebody kicks that pin in the middle that we have. You know, then you'd have to check it. You have to set the laser up and recheck it. So I just had it there just in case. That's what you want the concrete floor to look like after you pour it, screed it, bow float it. You don't you don't want to be have, having to throw concrete in up under your bow float because you got low spots. You want to see both ends both ends of the bow float touching. Then you that means you don't have a hump under that bow float where one end doesn't touch but the other end does. And then you know you've got that screeded or rotted pretty flat, really nice. Well, that's going to do it for today's pour, guys. So please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing now. I come out with a couple videos a week about all different types of concrete stuff, stamp concrete, you know, broom finish concrete, pool decks we do, a lot of patios, uh, basement floors, concrete slabs, setting them up, forming them. Uh, we do even do epoxy coatings if you like to learn about that stuff. If you want to learn how to do concrete like we do, you can join my private membership, the Concrete Underground. Uh, if you go to the description down below the video where it says show more, I got all the links in there for all the stuff, all the tools we use. The links in there for the Concrete Underground, you can check that out. But again, thanks for watching. Thanks for checking in here on my channel. Let me know if you think we did this nice and fast. We're up to about 18 minutes right now. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings, multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.